a boy who has lived i call myself a liver i thought i was kylie jenner i thought i'll put it up and the internet will break and like the site will go live and everyone will be buying t-shirts and like you know in my mind there'll be a digital war of tech there were like three souls her instagram i thought it was badalgiri because i would read it as one word and i've been reading it as badalgiri and i like me in every version of yeah. me that's something i actually learned from kareena kapoor also food in the north being just amazing the food in punjab is just it has a different taste like they put something like tasty molecules who is always energetic i want to say ananya pande i know many times if i've had a party at home and the party is not picking up but then ananya pande shows up and people yeah. are just one excited to see her she's excited to be there cuz like i said if ananya is coming to a party she bring, she comes who do you think throws the best house parties i would like to say tara sutaria an unexpected answer oh, wow. suzan khan If oh, wow. Susie has a party, I am not missing that party. I can't because I have things to do and places to be and a life to live. One day I will tell my grandkids, you know, there was an Ori Express and forty yeah. beds on this bus and yeah. and you know and we'll all be then we'll reach Spiti Valley and I'll make this reel with all of them and I'll be like, ये मैं है और ये मैं अब बस है और यह हम आप हाँ भी हो गया है. Sometimes for a good life, all you need is some good vibes. But a good vibes है क्या? Good vibes is all about finding the right place, the right people, the right mood and the right things to do. And to share and spread those good vibes with us, we have someone really special. He's a real hard worker who's currently working on himself. He rules the social media with the strategies coming out of his relevance room. The celebrities love him, the paps love him and the fans are going crazy for him. He's someone who's living the dream life that we all wanted to. Please welcome the ultimate liver, Ori. Hi Ori, welcome to the show. How sweet. Thank you, Roman. That was such a cute introduction. Thank you. Like I'm I went from tired to so energetic just sharing <laughs> that. And I'm blushing also on the show. And I'm excited. The show is all about good vibes. So what is good vibes for you? one place that we got a lot of good vibes from was your social media oh. especially your uh, the way you you know design the thumbnails thank you, the thank way you, so much. you write the captions they're so catchy and even thank your bio you. thank you when uh, talent doesn't work when work hard hard, hard, hard work, work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard yeah it's uh, yeah yeah it's it, it just stuck with us and uh, we were like yeah man that's that's true my that's, mom had written that and pinned it on you know those bulletin boards that you have in your house and i was a little kid right. so me and my brothers have grown up reading that we never understood it we were like is she calling us talented talentless and therefore telling us to work hard cuz she's confirmed you'll have no talent but remember you can work hard <laughs> and it took me really long to understand what she meant yeah um but then with age you kind of understand that statement hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard and i live by that and it's brought me to where i am right golden golden words Thank i think you. this quote can take you a long way so uh, as we mentioned the show is about good vibes you get uh, a lot of good vibes from the right people in your mm. life who would you say are these people in your life that always give you good vibes i feel at this point in my life if you are in my life you're someone who's been giving me good vibes like even if you were someone who was negative that i was forced to be around let's say like a classmate or someone you're sitting with in school or someone you have to work with i feel i've mastered the art of you know taking that negative energy and putting my negative energy into that and negative negative makes a positive and now there's like a good vibe between us so i'm good at maneuvering and understanding the other person which is a skill of its own to be able yeah. to understand the person you're with and you know be able to walk around them if you need to to get to a point where the relationship has a balance Um so today if you see anyone in my life I have good vibes with that person I don't keep toxicity around me Yeah once once you start understanding who you are you understand what kind of people you want to be around with as well And as you know celebrities they face a lot of these things you know when they're partying a lot of people they don't really understand that they might be in their own space mm-hmm. You think there might be some uh, uh some etiquettes that these fans could follow when they're around celebrities or something I feel if you're a fan and you're a part at a party and you have the opportunity to be at a party with a celebrity you like or someone you're a fan of there are certain cues that you can follow to maneuver your way um first try and read the person see their energy look if they're in a social mood if they're open to meeting someone or whether they're close try and read their body language see the, like the smile on their face 
and um, and according to that make your move and sometimes it's better to just go and be direct and say hi I'm, I'm so sorry to disturb you I'm a really big fan I would really love a photo and I loved you in this give them that extra compliment a celebrity is also a person don't take away their time and bother them but also don't disrespect them by just coming and saying hi can I have picture and then right. walking away and don't disturb them in the see I'm someone who is a fan and also to be a celebrity i am both exactly. so you will find me disturbing people for pictures but you'll also find people disturbing me for pictures so i kind of get it but um one thing that i find when i'm playing the celebrity avatar that i find that really bugs me is wrong place wrong time like if i'm in the airport and you can see it's like 3 in the morning i'm tired and i'm pushing my trolley and you come and bug me in a very buggy like i will like we can snap and it's bad that did happen to me once and i felt so bad but that wasn't the time and place or you could like you know smile from a distance give that energy to the person that there's warmth kind of you project it figure out how to do that and then maybe walk up don't just attack the person i've been right. attacked at many parties and i don't like it so i also try not to attack when i don't know the person or not to right. you know whatever and another thing that i really don't like is that i find really annoying is when the person pretends they don't know you and they're trying to be cool yeah, i'm not going to give yeah, you a photo yeah, yeah. respect me right. and my hard work whether you've seen me on my reels or my interviews respect that and come right. and say hi ori i am a big fan i love like i love this reel you made i love like a lot of times when people tell me they're a fan and they're like i love your reels or your videos i always say which one yeah. cuz i want to know are you really, really you a know fan? or are you but just but that's that's me but again to a celebrity it doesn't hurt if when they're giving you the picture i just loved your work in this movie i just loved your role i love what you said i loved your fashion sense that right. quick compliment does not hurt anyone you know right a compliment to hurts who don't yeah. steal their time with 100 compliments and non stop yeah. like chattering right that's that's so true so when uh, talking about parties we see you at a lot of parties and uh, you know we love the fact that you know that you're living that life mm-hmm. so uh, there are certain types of people mm-hmm. uh, that you see at every party yeah right who would you say in in your life are these uh, certain types of people i'll give you a title maybe you can tell us who is that type of mm-hmm. person someone who is always energetic whatever kind time of the party whatever kind of party the person is always energetic i want to say ananya pande she will not come to a party if her energy is low she's tired or she's not feeling it or she's not in the mood she won't come and she back or oh, sorry not coming or no not going to see you tonight but if she comes she comes with the attitude that she's going to be fun and bubbly and be a life like a glowing life of the party and um I know many times if I've had a party at home and the party is not picking up, but then Ananya Pandey shows up and people yeah. are just one excited to see her. Star presence is a thing, wow. and she's excited to be there because, like I said, if Ananya is coming to a party, she bring, she comes. Right. She's coming and she's coming to come, and um, yes, she's bubbly and she's cute and um, you know she doesn't have sass and attitude, so she's talking to everyone and everyone's talking to her. I know, like. I've introduced many people to Ananya and no one has ever said she's those snooty Bollywood girl. I've never got that right. feedback. The other day my illustrator who you know you right. said my reels and my thumbnails. Right. He's a sweet guy from Aurangabad who does all my artwork. So I told him I said you know why don't you come to Bombay for a weekend my friends are having a party come for the party spend oh, wow. Monday do dinner with me. Let's we talk every day about work get to know me yeah. join my life that you've been drawing for so long. And I was actually at Ananya's house before we went to the party and I told him Ananya my illustrator is coming he's from another city um he's never been to a party like this so just be a little friendly and yeah, i told yeah. all the friends that and um the minute he came and i was like oh my god sid so nice to meet you i've seen all your thumbnails i love yeah. your thumbnails when you make the thumbnail with me in it you better make me look the best <laughs> and blah 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 and, you know she's given that attention she's all the bubbles that have come out of her have gone and you and you know for a sweet boy from aurangabad who's yeah. come for the first time to a party like this to meet an, an ananya pandey of tanisa yeah. this is not bombay city deal. where you can see her maybe having coffee or at the gym this is coming from completely out of this world right. and she doesn't know it to me to be nice to my illustrator chalo nice civil she doesn't know it to me to give that extra mile of friendliness right. that boom of energy and he was quite shy at the party you know didn't know anyone you right. know someone from a different city and in the end of course he had a great time but it's so nice to see someone who you would think ananya pandey that stature like movies yeah. tv shows big screen ott netflix brand deals international brand deals but yet like the bubbliness that came off was so it it wasn't a fake bubbliness and right. but she really brings that energy and the energy continues all night there's no switching off she doesn't get fake <laughs> she doesn't so like she's saying hi nice to meet you and then turning around and like is a different person no right you know like she, she'll do all of that and go forward continuing like that Right, she's real and her energy is also real. Her energy is very. Sometimes I think I'm energetic and then I see Ananya and I'm like, babe, like, <laughs> yeah. am I really energetic? Am I energetic or you energetic? <laughs> yeah. 
I want to get those wings too. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, who would you say is the loudest in uh, in during your parties? There are people who are like louder. Apart, like let's say like Ranveer Singh, his dressing sense is louder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he enters the room, you turn and you hear him. Or he has a boombox in his hand. I've not experienced that many times, but Ranveer is a cool guy at a party. Um, if you're around him, it is about him. He commands that attention. Right. He knows how to, and everyone around him is dying to give him that attention. Um, Sara Ali Khan is also loud. Um, she wears the colors. She does the right. funky nails. Um, she has the funky bags. You know, the quirkiness comes and quirkiness comes with loudness. Um, right. I don't know anyone who's loud vocally. Like neither of them are saying "woo," <laughs> but um, right. but when they genuine. enter, you know they enter. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And who who would you say is the quietest at these parties? Quietest at the party. I want to say Navya is the quietest at the party. Sometimes right. Navya will come and go, and I didn't even know she came. I'll see her <laughs> on the pap picture the next day. I was like, Navya, did you come? I didn't see. I, you know, and she'll come and she'll have her sweet fun, and then she leave also early. Right. At least from my past experience, recent past experiences. Yeah, that's about it. Right. And uh, do, is there someone who's always flirting? Me. Yeah. I'm always flirting. I'm too flirting with the wall. I'm flirting with the plant. The other day, I was accidentally flirting with someone's mom because one of my friend's moms was alone at the bar. So I was like, let me give her some attention. Oh, wow. Flirting with this auntie, and then I was like, she was like, I was like, anyways, like, yeah. um, you know, how come you're here? Like, where? she's like, oh, I'm just so and so's mom. And I was like, oh, their mom. I thought you were their sister. <laughs> and yeah. she was like blushing, and I was like oh. really enjoying with this auntie at the bar. Yeah. Um, it made her night. It made my night. Yeah, yeah that's. Uh, it's it's like that. Uh, Floating is like healthy, like yoga. I think it's the dialogue from uh, Ye Jawani Ye Diwani. I don't know about all that, and I don't believe in like yoga and meditation and stuff. But like, I'm floating for my enjoyment. Like, I'm having fun. <laughs> I all do right. float in the comment section of Instagram. I'll find some random person. I'll start floating in their comments. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, openly. Openly. Yeah. Five in the morning to eight in the morning is my comment on Instagram. So. <laughs> I think we'll we'll have to. Every start. morning, like, I'll start getting messages from people saying, "What have you written? <laughs> Why have you used random person's Instagram? You're just writing things, and it's okay." <laughs> Right, I think we need to research your comment section now. It's very easy to find. Right. So talking about these right people in your mm -hmm. life, we have some memories uh, mm -hmm. of yours from mm -hmm. your social media, okay. and we got a little sneak peek with these pictures, but mm -hmm. we think there is a story behind it. Okay. Maybe we can uh, get to know about these Fine. stories from you. This is the first picture. Okay. Uh, I think you and Ibrahim were twinning. Yeah, we were twinning. Um, we were in Goa. This was during COVID. It was like the opening of COVID, and Alaya had invited us to her house or wherever she was staying for like dinner with two, three of her friends. And we took this picture, and it's really funny because we were in Goa, so no one looks like this in <laughs> Goa. Goa is hot, and Goa is humid, and there's lots of moisture in the air, and you're sweaty, and yeah. you know it's sticky, and. We look very polished here, but in real life, yeah. we all look like raccoons. <laughs> like, you know, you're like, and then yeah. I sent the picture to Alia saying, um, Alaya, saying, we took this picture, the three of us, it's so cute. Like, you know, match, yeah. match, you're in the middle, like, it looks like a movie poster. Yeah. And she's like, Ori, there's no way you're posting that. I look like a bloody <laughs> pigeon. And when I looked at the picture, I was like, you're not wrong, babe. Because this, that, the original picture is not how we looked in real life on a normal day. We were in right. Goa, like, frizzy hair, like, you know, glossy, yeah. over sweaty skin. And so I've really gone ham on the picture, and like you know, like edited and like, <laughs> and yeah, that was the story behind this picture. Yeah, lovely. Uh, what a lovely story, and uh, what a. <laughs> I've really what sat and polished that picture. <laughs> when you're talking about Goa and parties, mm -hmm. so I think uh, some of the best parties are happening in Goa right now. Mm -hmm. What do when you travel to Goa? What are some places that you always ensure that you know you should visit? I just would not know because I was in Goa so long ago in COVID and after that I've been to Goa just once more. Oh. Me and my best friend Tanya Shroff, we had gone together. Yeah. Like Vedanta has worked there, so he was there and our other friends were there. And Tanya and I have shown up and Urfi was there, so we found Urfi and hijacked her and taken her to the club in the W and it was this amazing time we had. Then our other friends joined us and um, yeah, it was really fun and you know, at that time, I just introduced Urfi to my friend circle, right. and a lot of them were like very, like, you know, in two minds about Urfi. They're only seen her on Instagram, and I was like, no, no, this girl's a cool girl. I yeah. vouch for her, and they all loved her. Oh, wow. They have all become her friends separately of me to the extent <laughs> that they're chatting with her, and I have no idea there's a friendship. I've gone to my friend's house, and Urfi's there. I was like, oh, hello. <laughs> I, I love her. So I was like, happy to see you, but I just didn't know that, you know, like, yeah, um, a tree had grown out of this seed that I planted. Oh, and yeah. that was one night, and the next night, we were at my friend Vedant's event, and that was really fun, of course. And um, that was Goa. Other than that, I don't really remember in COVID which places we had gone to or not. 
Who would you say is your uh, favorite person to gossip with? Favorite person to gossip. Okay, so what happens is when you invite me to a party, everyone's always known this. It's never been Ori. It's Ori plus like five. Yeah. And I always come with like five friends or five this or five that, but usually it's five minions. And my favorite people to gossip with are my minions because people tend to overlook the fact that they're there. And as a minion, you get uninterrupted access to the things I'm at because I come with my, right. my right. little minions. So they are actually sprawled at the party and they're having a great time. They all think they're different versions of me. You know, I call them Ori 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11, 11, infinity. They actually think they are Ori. And recently they've been acting like Ori to Ori. So they throw the attitude at me that I'm meant to throw. It's very weird and complicated. But anyways, my favorite people to gossip with are them because they will be at the party and people will just overlook that there. So people will be minding their own business, doing their thing, but the minions will be orying and eavesdropping on everything. Yeah. And so at the end of the night or the next day when we meet to debrief, oh, wow. they'll be like, you know, so this one did this and this one did this and I was just there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wow. like a fly on the wall, just <laughs> sitting there, like the chipkali you can't get rid of and they know everything. Oh, they wow. have their eyes, their ears, and I don't, I've never told them to do this. They're just they doing, they're doing just it, just enjoying. Yeah. And then they bring it all home. All right. Uh, who, who is your favorite person to shop with? I don't shop with anybody. You like I'm to shop alone? I'm a quick shopper. And I can scan the room very well. Like I can enter a store and I'll go zoom. And I've seen everything. I know what I want. I know what I don't want. And if I want something, click, click, it's gone. I've bought it. I don't debate, should I get it, should I not get it. I know in a month I can spend X amount on shopping. I don't go over that because I like to like, I'm a numbers person. Right. I am a businessman at the end of the day. Um, if you spend all your money, you'll have no money. So in a month, I assign this amount for this and this amount for this. So I can enter a store and do a whole vasuli and I know in two minutes exactly what I want, don't want and I'm done. Right, That's and I, I would agree with that because we love your fashion Thank sense. You. I personally love all your looks. Thank you. I'm uh, a fan of how you know you keep changing your hairstyles, you. hair colors, you keep uh, switching those. I think that's that's very cool. Thank I you. always wanted to do, I, not just me, I think a lot of people, mm -hmm. they want to keep switching their looks. They just, I've, I feel, are a little more conscious um, about their looks. I was told once when I was young and my hair, my hair curls, like it gets big and I cut it short. And someone was like, oh, Ari's going to have a new personality now. And I was like, well, what do you mean? And my friend was like, yeah, you know, every time you change your hair, you change your personality, personality. with it. So I was like, what an interesting concept. Because it's true, because when I had long hair and you're flipping and you're feeling like that when you're short hair and I've had a buzz cut and I've had this and that and personality does keep changing with your hair. I, I mean, not drastically, maybe not, but it right. does. And so I was like, how freaking cool. And you know, I call myself a liver. What does being a liver mean? It means you've lived. You're a boy who has lived. I've collected experiences. I can't be like 50 years old and be like, I've never colored my hair red because then I've not truly lived because right. living means you've collected those. You've experienced almost every experience. I say I'm a liver because when something happens in life and I'm giving advice or I'm saying something, it's because I'm speaking of experience. I always tell people my experience is a bit my education, right? right. And um, so I want to experience the different auris that come out to me with these different, in fact, like yesterday my fade was this and today it's this. I've just, in one day I've just changed that a little bit. And you know, when I was in boarding school, there's this guy, um, called Narain, right. really cool guy and I wasn't that confident then as I am today, I've really like grown. It's just right. like it's a mind game, confidence is the key to success or to looking success. Confidence is the key to looking great. Uh, the other day someone said, oh I liked your long hair or someone said, I really liked your buzz cut. I was like, it's fine babe, I like me <laughs> in every version of me. Yeah. And that's something I actually learned from Kareena Kapoor also because I was watching some interview of her where someone asked her, you know, pregnancy weight or whether I think, which is that movie, she was size zero, zero, Tamash, uh, can't yeah, take yeah, yeah. Tashin. Tash, Tashin. Tashin. She had done some item dance and she was size triple zero, double zero. She looked like a bazillion gazillion bucks. I mean, she always does, but wow. And then I think someone had asked her about her pregnancy and Karina said like, I've liked myself at every weight. And we all know Karina has really, like, she never looks bad and she never looks like she thinks she looks bad. Yeah. So she really has truly loved herself at every look, every hairstyle, every this. I mean, she is Karina Kapoor. Of She's course. not the average looking person of at all. Course. But yet, like to you, you are you. So you can feel chubby, you can feel skinny. You can, but I love that line when she said like, I've loved every version of myself. That was like, I'm stealing that from her personality. I'm going to love every version. When I gain weight, my face is chubby, my looking cute. I've loved every version of myself. Yeah, you definitely did. And what a great way to tell our audiences also uh, that the confidence should come with yeah. it. You need to feel that, you know, you're confident and you're going to look good. So, uh, Talking about good vibes, another uh, way to get good vibes is from a particular place. Okay. So many people go to the beaches, some many go to mountains, you know, to get those good vibes. Do you have a particular place where you go to for good vibes? 
who goes to a place that doesn't give them good vibes, right? Like recently I went to Kora Canal, I went to boarding school, great vibes, I can't keep going back to Kora Canal. I spend half my time in the UK and I take these three hour walks every day because it's a walking city, you can walk in London, I go to the park and great vibes, amazing, wow. I live in town and every right. day I drive to Bandra to Pali Hill to the gym because I need that one hour drive to the gym, the one hour drive back, like I okay. need that. And you mentioned the the Ori party. Yes. We were really excited to you know yes. be a part of it as yes. well. Thank you. That's how we met. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So uh, how how did the party go? The Ori party was a complete success, wow. a phenomenal masterpiece, if I may say so myself. And even if I don't say so myself, the numbers say it because we were sold out. Yeah. So when I told Kim, Kim Sharma from Dharma, I think she's is the VP or EVP or something from a DCA. Right. Okay. So I told Kim, I was like, Kim, you know, this is the project I've had on my mind for really long and I've always wanted to execute it. I want to have an Ori party because I'm known for being at parties. People right. are taking pictures with me at parties and meeting me at parties. And my fans keep writing to me saying, we want to meet you at a party. Even if you're not my fan, people say, we want a party, party with you. Really, and yeah. this is something I feel people want. And it's something I want to do where I have everyone in my t-shirts and my emojis. Let's test it. Let's see if the fans will put their money where their mouth is. And yeah. so we planned this Ori party and credit where credit's due, Kim actually planned it A to Z. Um, of course, I was the one there doing the activity, at the activity, but there was a lot of, lot of planning that Kim and team did. Um, making the t-shirts, selling the tickets, setting up the website, this blah, 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 blah. And so the Ori party. To enter the party, you had to buy a ticket. The ticket was a t-shirt. So you had to go right. online, buy the Ori t-shirt, right. it comes home, you wear the t-shirt, you get into the party. And um, I was like, I'll be so happy if we just sell a hundred. If we sell a hundred tickets, I can tell people hundred people came. It sounds like a lot. And I'll be so happy if we sold a hundred. Yeah. And you know, the day we um, put up the thing and I put a story, I thought I was Kylie Jenner. I thought I'll put it up and the internet will break and like the site will go live and everyone will be buying t-shirts and like, you know, in my mind, there'll be a digital war of tech. There were like three sold. And I was like, shit. Right. But this was like weeks before the party. And then I realized like, no, I'm not. Near One reality check, I'm not Kylie Jenner. Two, no, this is India, people buy things closer to time, people also like buying things the day of. Right. So leading up to the party, sure, we had sold from 3 to 6 to 10 to 20 to 30. Like, you know, as the party was approaching, the yeah, graph the kept going, going up. up. And at some point we passed 100, so I was very happy. At some point we passed 200, I was very happy. And I was like, wow, because Kim had always said, and I was like, Kim, I'm so nervous, I'm nervous. So she was like, oh, you know, I believe the party will be a success. I was like, how? The numbers aren't showing it. And she was like, no, but I believe in the celebrity of you and I believe that you are loved and I know people will come and I'm not worried, the team's not worried, no one is worried, but I was like, it's my face that will flop. I'm worried. And she was like, relax, relax. But she kept saying, every day promote it, do things to promote it, just promote it, that's all you can do till the party. I had people coming from like um, Pune and Hyderabad and Bangalore. There were eight people on the forum back to Bangalore. I was really, really touched by that. Like that touched me and I touched everyone. And I told everyone, if you went to this party, you will not just get a picture and my time. I gave everyone my time. I had a stamp. So if I met you, gave you my time, give you not just a picture. I was, I would ask each fan, are you happy? So you got your picture. If I had to make a reel with you, I made the reel. And then I oh, said, wow. are you happy? And if they said I'm happy, I stamped them. Oh, wow. So I know I've met them and I've done whatever. And if they wanted to come back, great. But I will prioritize the people I haven't met. I think there was only one person I didn't meet, this guy from Bangalore named Raghav. And he wrote to me saying I was so shy. And I was like, why? The point was to not, not be shy. Right. So weirdly, when I went to Bangalore recently, I was on a trip. I messaged him saying, I'm in Bangalore. I'll be at the airport at this time if you want to meet me outside. But he didn't reply till very late. But I will catch him at some point and give him that picture that he bought to attend the party. But yeah, and the content that came out was wild. And yeah. the party was great. If you watch the videos, I'm, I was in the party with the fans. At no right. point did I leave them. I said, my promise was I will party with you. With and I you. did. I wasn't on some table at some elevated level looking down on the DG booth. I was on all these places, right. but I was in the party. Right. That was the Ori party. You bought the experience to be with me. Exactly. And uh, what a lovely experience. So talking about these memories also of yours, we want to know the story behind some few pictures. So this is uh, another picture. You and uh, Rihanna. Okay, this is me and Rihanna, bad gal Riri, bad my whole Riri. life. For Instagram, words. I thought it was Badalgiri because I would read it as one word and I've been reading it as Badalgiri and of course I knew who Rihanna was. Yeah. So yeah. I was wearing these giant dandelion earrings because my outfit was this giant mosquito dragonfly rahul mishra outfit so i'd worn these big earrings to like you know go with the outfit have you seen them right the giant crystal dandelions yeah. 
she was performing on stage and I was recording her the whole time and when she came off stage she was like I watched your earrings the whole time I was like I was like, you have? And she's like, I had my eye on oh, them. Yeah. And I looked at my friend, I was like, take, whip it, whip the, get the camera on. You took the camera on. I was like, babe, take the earring. She took the earring and at some yeah. point she lost the earring. Oh. And so she came back for the other one. Oh. And uh, so then I actually pinned it on her dress over there. And what a moment that what was really moment. for bad gal, Riri, Badalgiri to come and take my earring right off my ear. Yeah. And uh, I think it's a dream for a lot of people. Oh, and Shania people. Kapoor in the background, I didn't even realize that. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was... Yeah. But you know, in life, many times I think of things that happen to... Like, when things happen to me, they're so normal. Like, I'm not so, like, by it. But then people are like, you do realize that's abnormal. I'm not saying this was not normal. On right. the scale of normal, this was, like, up here. Right. But I've also met Travis Scott. And yeah. that was abnormal. Yeah. I've also met Anne Hathaway. And that was abnormal. I've been to Kylie Jenner's house. And that was abnormal. So... Yes, this is abnormal, but then the way people reacted to how abnormal it was, wasn't the way I was taking it. Like for example, some days, very rare occasion. When I say very rare, very rare. Like of course if something bad happens, I will be sad. But a very rare occasion, you will find me sad and down and you know, I have to do something or be somewhere. And people be like, oh Ori, but how can you be sad? Like you're Ori, like look at your life. Like I was like, yes, but I am Ori. So to me, I am right. just me. Like right. you may see me as Ori and look at the life he's living, but I am Ori. So in my shoes, in my body, in my life, I am me. So there are days I can wake up feeling ugly. There are days I can wake up feeling sad. There are days I can be unhappy or ungrateful for the things that I have. But I am living my life. Right? I am in my shoes. So to me, the things that you may see I have, but to me, these are the normal things. This is my right. life. Like I am, I am Ori and I can wake up unhappy and I can wake up not happy with the way things have gone. And to you, you look at my life and be like, wow, it's so amazing. Blah, blah, blah. I am me in my shoes, right? Um, very rare occasion that you'll find me on a sad day, but it can happen. Right. But yeah, so again, when people were like, wow, like people really went crazy, I was like, okay, yes, I get it, I get it. Right, so uh, talking about right place in life, we see that, you know, you travel a lot. Mm -hmm. so, and you've traveled to a lot of places, Europe, America, mm -hmm. even India, a lot of parts you've been to. What's a place that, you know, you love to travel to frequently? Um, the place I travel to the most frequently is London. I split my time between Bombay and London. So if you want to do the math and ask like a, the honest answer is I go to London the most. Yeah. But there are a lot of other places I love that I wish I could keep revisiting. Like how I said I visited Kodai Canal after 11 years. Um, one of my best favorite most trips in life was my trip to Punjab. I've said this before. Since we're talking about places, we want to know about your go-to places. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your go-to place for relaxing in Mumbai itself? Like this library cafe experience to me was a Once relaxing experience. Only. Yeah, but, but you can't do that often. I mean to say like I can do it often, but to me that's the level of relax. I will, if you have to relax and you're calming down, that is where I'm calming down to. I'm not going to other things. I do not, I'm not looking to yoga and meditate and medicate and I don't know all of that. Like, I just don't. Like, I feel like relaxing is a waste. And it's important to a lot of people, but yeah. for me, it's a waste of time. I'm sure many people need to relax or deal with their stress with relaxing, but I don't need to relax. Right. Like, what? when people say, oh, we need to detox, I was like, I need to retox. <laughs> Retoxicate me immediately. Yeah. I don't have time to waste. Like, I'm not, you're not going to find me sitting at home with my feet up and the TV on or something. No. 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 I'm not sitting and listening to music and doing nothing. That's not me. So, what's chilling for you? Time man? cannot be wasted. You don't like to chill? This what? to me is, this is chilling. This is chilling? I am chilled right now. Oh wow. Yes. And I don't like sleeping also because I feel when you're sleeping, you're wasting even more time. Yes, you need to sleep. So sleep as much as you need to. But if you sleep more than you have to sleep, you're wasting your time being awake or alive in your life. Like let's say my life is like awake for like X amount of hours a day and then I spend too much time sleeping. I'm wasting my time because I love my reality so much. So I want to be part of that. I, I got it. Like... I feel like when I'm asleep, I've missed out on the things I could have done. So I would right. like to be awake longer and sleep just as much as I need to sleep. So I can be awake to enjoy my life and be enjoying my life. Very nice. What would you say is your uh, go-to place for uh, partying? Actually, there are many places. Actually, if you're thinking of Bombay, actually, okay. We're not counting house parties, we're counting outgoing places. Yeah. So growing up, me and my friends would do Olive Thursday. Olive Thursday was like the place to be for me and my friend group. And I've gone with so many friends and we've had so many memories there and made new friends. And the crowd was always great and the music was always great and the party was always fun. And I've gone with so many different friend groups over the years. You know, people come and go. I mean, I have all my friends with 
in that olive experience people have entered exited we all come together blah 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 i first like the idea of olive because someone once told me oh yeah i miss the days karina kapoor used to go out and look hot and get photographed at parties and as like where was she going so i was like you know the bar night at olive on thursday and i just had this visual of karina and her hot gang of girls like walking out of olive like looking sexy and getting pictured yeah. and i was like <laughs> i i must have That this I experience do. i i need to be <laughs> Karina Kapoor exiting Olive, and so we went to Olive, and it was great. I met the manager, this one, and she's amazing. And so we've always been going to Olive Thursdays now, less than before, just because we've a little grown up. Yeah. Um, on a Friday or Saturday, Bastion on the top is banging. Yeah. Sometimes in Bastion and Bandra as a bar night, it's banging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the nines where I had the Ori party. Why did I have the Ori party there? Because I happen to have been at a few parties there. Yeah. And they were amazing. The music is, I mean, the place lends itself to such a fun night out. um the in house dj is amazing and the place is beautiful also the place is beautiful no doubt but see a place can be beautiful but it has to like give the it has to give something it has to give that energy and that vibe so allow the party to yeah. grow and happen give good so vibes i feel the nines does that bastion definitely i mean bastion is like the most easiest answer to say and olive for me if i'm thinking of going out i'm thinking of those three places i don't know if i'm thinking of other places but sometimes i feel i do this funny activity recently that i just go out alone to random places oh. and i know people they will know who i am right. and no one will suspect that i came alone so oh. i just show up alone and random people start talking to me and you know if i like you i'll start talking back cuz i talk to anyone who talks to me the fan a friend whatever okay and they'll think oh his friends are somewhere here and he's just wandering around and we found him and and you know so i'll just go out and enjoy the attention these strangers are giving me and i'll give it back to them and i made like some really good friends that way and no one will suspect that i've just gone out alone with my attention like me and the attention people give me have gone out together and i've just no one will even know that i showed up alone <laughs> So you know, like people are like, oh, who are you going to this party? Or who are you going? I was like, oh, I could just be there alone. You'll never know. That's a new thing. Yeah, like next time, uh, maybe no I spot one... you. I'll just come up to you and start. Yeah, talking. it's it's very normal. And yeah. and also when I go somewhere, usually go to like if it's a known place, and I already know many friend groups. Right. Will be there. So each group will think, oh, he came with that group, or with this group, or with this group, because oh, I'm very social. Yeah. But actually, I just showed up. <laughs> I was bored, and I and I just <laughs> came up, you know. Wow. Um, or I'll go to a really weird, random place that you'd never expect to see me at. and again no one will suspect i came alone well i know what would you say is your go to place for a nice meal if i'm bre- breaking i don't do cheat meals but um if i'm breaking my lifestyle diet um i'm going to bastion i know exactly what i like to eat there and i order those 10 items and maybe i have a bite of each thing and not finish anything and my friends will yell at me or someone will think i'm wasting but i'll give the food away it's fine um but that's where i'm going if i'm looking for a wholesome meal to put into my stomach What do you usually order? Maybe our audiences can the try. The Malaysian or Mongolian? It's Malaysian or Mongolian noodles with chicken. That's one. Uh, it's the kung pao tofu. That's my favorite thing. It's the crab thermidor that comes with these little toasts. Since you take it and you like, make it into like a little toast, as if you like, which you you know whatever, oh. and then you eat that. And then it's the butter garlic crab that comes with these really cute little buns. They look like little bums, and like you can just squish it. If you put it in your face, just squish your face into it. Um, that's really yummy. Then we order like a few more things for the friends, but these are my yeah. main items there. So guys, do try them out yeah. next time you're at Bastion. Yeah. Or I'm eating at Janvi and Kushi's house, and I'll pretend I've not eaten dinner at home. I'm not eat <laughs> have my dinner at home as well. I'm like, oh, I've come for dinner, but I'll actually like, like, it's either a paneer, yeah, it's the paneer bhuji that they make at the house. But sometimes they put a lot of chili in it, or they don't put chili. And I have a sensitive stomach, because Janvi like, no, there's no chili in it. and i'll eat it and my mouth will be on fire but the day that they make it for me meaning no spice at all yeah it's it's really delicious it's really 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 yummy so uh, talking about uh, you were mentioning house parties are also a thing where you head a lot to who who do you think throws the best house parties i mean there are many amazing house parties yeah. but now to really think of a party that to me was out of the box um I would like to say Tara Sutaria, an unexpected answer, oh, but wow. another unexpected answer. Maybe it's not an unexpected answer. Suzanne Khan. If oh, wow. Suzy has a party, I am not missing that party. I can assure Suzanne Khan that I will arrive to anything she has at her house. I love a party with a good theme. If you tell me the party has a theme and a dress code, you've like turned me on <laughs> as hell. Because now we have a reason to dress up and we have things to plan and we have work to do. Hey. You know, and Tara Sutaria will have these. funny themes at her parties like her birthday was called prom night 
and my whole costume I was going as the chaperone at oh, the party because wow. you know like the different people as a prom king, prom king, this, that, yeah. and suits. And it was really sad because I came from a, 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 a set, so I didn't have time to pick up my chaperone out. But I told her like I'm coming as the principal, yeah. the chaperone at the prom. <laughs> um, but I loved that theme. And then another party she had was she was having a Christmas party, but now she's made it a vintage Christmas. So it's not your regular Christmas. You have to dress all vintagey. And so I'd worn this like neck scarf and a little hat, and that was a really fun party. And. Suzanne Khan's parties, that woman has thought of everything. Like, you know, if you're like ironing a shirt and you iron each corner and it's crisp and yeah, like that's her party. Yeah. Everything has been aligned wow. and thought of and it's just like... Flawless. It's such a fun party every time. Like, um, the music, the decor. Decor a party is important because then you're not just in a house, you're in a decorated house. Yeah. And Suzanne Khan really knows how to decorate. She once had this party called the Alter Ego Party. It was called the Alter Ego Party and it was right around Halloween. And so it was kind of like a Halloween. And I just loved that party. Wow. My gosh, I've gone to that party and of course everyone dressed up, but I took it a bit too seriously because Halloween is my thing. And so I've come as Frankenstein. So oh. I've worn this bodycon t shirt with this belt print, you know, because he's like in a straight jacket yeah, over. Yeah. So like belt print and my face is green, like green, like face paint, and my eyes are like dark. And I've worn the knobs, like it's been glued to my neck, you know, the bolts. And I've come for her party and I really, I did look scary. And I bumped into Shweta Bachchan, who's my friend's mom, so I should say auntie, but for the course of the interview, I'll say Shweta Bachchan. And she's like, oh, Ori, why are you so scary? And I was like, I was like, I just wanted to feel young. And you know, it's, it's a Halloween party, alter ego party. It really spooked her. When you mentioned alter ego, I was like, wow, what yeah. a It wasn't just, it wasn't thought. Halloween, it was the alter ego Egos. party, come as your other self. And wow. my other self was a monster that had been created by a bunch of doctors, but you know what, it applies to me. because. People are like, oh, he's like an industry plant, he's been created. I was like, yes, let's play into it. I'm Frankenstein tonight. Yeah. I'm sure I spooked everyone. everyone. If you see the picture of me at that party, I had yeah. full green, black eyes and bolt screws coming out of my neck. And imagine so much the fun to dress gym, up, yeah. getting ready for the party with the makeup person was fun. Coming to the party, the pictures of the party, the decor, like, and what a theme, the alter wow, ego wow. party. <laughs> wow, what a, what a way to put, a thought, put your thought into it. And that's what I'm saying, the whole creativity that you could put into yeah. a party with a theme. Right. So, moving on, uh, when we talk about good vibes, uh, you get a lot of good vibes from uh, from the right, getting the right mood also. How you mentioned that, you know, sometimes in a party, let's say you set a mood by the music, the yes. theme, the food. Yes. How can, you know, general public, they can get the right mood to get those good vibes from their friends or whoever they want to talk to? Try to leave your problems at the door. You know, try to leave, like, your over emotions at the door and strong opinions behind. Like, bring that later at the time and place. If you're at a party and you're looking for a good vibe or even a social setting, just don't bring all of that there. That's like immediate downer because everyone has a life and everyone has stress and everyone has problems and when you've chosen to come out and enjoy yourself, you don't need someone else's attitude or stress or anxiety or problems bringing you down, down or someone yeah. irritating you and being needy and like oh nye, 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 nye. <laughs> like that's like your clear cut, no people aren't gonna like that. Like you've come to have a good time, have a good time. Make sure you're having a good time, put that on other people too. Wow. You mentioned about being a liver also. Mm -hmm. How can someone become a liver? I'm living, I'm, I'm a, liver. a liver. You really need to just live. You cannot be mundane where you're doing the same. I mean, even if you have a nine to five job and you need it, you can still be a liver. In those free hours of the day, don't come home and just watch TV or sit on Netflix or cozy up and together. boost yourself, give yourself that extra energy to accomplish and to, um, to squeeze those few free hours into doing your best. See, being a liver, you have to think for the future. In 10 years, if someone asks you something, you like, yeah. oh, did you do this? Have you ever done this? Have you watched this? You have to be able to say yes. It's not about just saying yes in the moment. It's about being able to say yes to things. You are not preparing for a questionnaire 10 years later, but you should be able to just say yes. Yeah. Have you done this? Yes. Have you done that? Of course I have. I'm a boy who has lived. I have yeah. lived my life. Yes, you only love mm. Ori, but you only live <laughs> one. Zindagi hai. So yeah. like, you're not going to be able to do it again. You're not, you are not going to be this young again. So if you don't do it today, when will you do it? Right? Exactly. I got the call for Big Boss and I didn't have much time to say yes. Yeah. But if I didn't do it then, when would I have when done it? I, yeah. And you don't know if things will go good or bad until you do it. Sure, it could have backfired in my face, it could have gone terribly, but it didn't. But right. I would have never known. And I always said before Big Boss also, the liver thing had come out before and I'd been saying it for years before. Yeah, I'd been yeah. saying it for maybe two years, I've been saying I'm a liver. Just never on, in a public platform. 
and I thought I was a liver and then I went into the big boss house it's like no now I'm definitely the next level of liver because I'm doing new things and exactly. this is everyone at some point in their life needs to go into the big boss house sure I had the opportunity to go for just 24 hours and that was my deal I was there for a day and a half but um what an experience you have to have these experiences you have to have them Wow, we as a viewer, we wanted to see more of you in the Big Boss house. I know I got that a lot, but I didn't have the time because, like yeah. I said, I'm a liver. Right. I don't have the like you know what? There's so many things I have to do. I don't have the time to do the same Big Boss for third, like you know many days in a row. The other day I did a cameo in a Hollywood film. I can't say which one, but it's my oh, wow. Hollywood debut. Oh wow! And um, they loved me so much on set that they offered me a role. They said, "Don't do just do a cameo. Come again." Oh wow. We'll extend we'll the character. you know and I was like guys I can't I really would love to wow. really would love more screen time but I can't because I have things to do and places to be and a life to live I cannot sign away my time to doing the same now I've done the cameo I'm in the movie I've I've experienced what it's like to be on a film set yeah, in London yeah, etc. Yeah. And I told my mom I was like my mom was like why didn't you take it you should have taken it it's a good film whatever and I was like no mom I can't I don't have such time I have things to do and places to be and events to attend and people to meet and my mom was like or you say you're a liver but you've not got the full experience of acting on a UK set and being an actor and I was like I was like mother you are not wrong yeah, but you are not right either <laughs> I don't got time for this <laughs> I stuck by that I was like I can't give the same thing can't go back to and also I hate film sets you know what? people think it's very glamorous and yeah. it is glamorous to be famous that it is but the actual work is not glamorous you are on a set you do have to fit that role every day you're taking the character home the public opinion that sits on you never ends you go home you're still a celebrity the public opinion matters and also there's so many wires there are so many, many wires yeah. on a film set and you could just trip and trip die like anything. what if you just trip like the other day i was walking i almost tripped over a wire and my security like kind of grabbed me and i was like thank freaking god because why are there so many wires, wires around yeah. and that's really something i think the film industry needs to tackle is the wire problem there are just too many wires and would you want to be a when you travel and you take out your bag and there's your laptop charger and iphone charger and your earphones all tangled up are you yeah, happy about that now imagine an entire set full of that now mm -hmm. now we're getting it now we're getting the picture it's uh, so i was like mother i will not <laughs> do another day of this i enjoyed my experience i got my yeah. picture i got my cameo i took a picture of the director and the co-stars i'm out yeah i want to live by leslie only. exactly yes <laughs> Right. Uh, talking about these memories, we have uh, another picture which I found personally very unique because uh, I don't, s I when I think of Ori, I don't see you doing such things. Also, what is? This is you uh, at a dahi handi. Yes. On yes. A yes. This is what an experience. Wow. So this was, and I'll tell you exactly which year. I think twenty. 2019 I want to say 2019 or 18 or 19 quite a while ago I can tell by my size I was very skinny when I climbed the top right. um I was in Shirdi okay I'd gone on a trip to Shirdi I just moved back from college so my parents were really pressured they like we're going to Shirdi we're taking a family trip the three of us my brothers were still in the states so it was just the three of us and we went to Shirdi and it was Jamnashtami and they were doing what is it called dahi handi dahi handi and so my dad said will you climb and i was like of course i will why would i yeah. it is my dream to climb this pyramid and reach the top and break the matka and um, and that's what i did and i used to do gymnastics in school yeah. so we had done those pyramids you know and i'd been on i was so always doing this without practice yeah this was no practice it wasn't that high it was maybe 1 2 3 or 4 so it wasn't too bad but I done gym I was I was very light at this point of yeah, time yeah. and as a kid I did gymnastics I was usually the tiniest anyways I did it I broke it and I told my I was like you best get the picture cuz yeah. there's only one matka so I was like papa if you don't get picture. that picture we're wrapping up this trip and we're going back home and he got the picture and it was amazing yeah. and so we continued our trip we went to Devalali do you know Devalali it's in Nasik okay. um, we had a family home there so okay. we went there and one day Shirdi one day Devalali and came back wow. that was the story behind this picture <laughs> So talking about good vibes you get a lot of good vibes from the right things that you do. How you mentioned living is about doing the things certain things in life. Mm -hmm. So what all experiences would you like to recommend to our audience that you know they should be doing some things in their life? I don't know if an activity can give you a good vibe. It's not a thing to give you a vibe. It's an activity. Right. If you're asking me what like could calm me down and put me in a good mood, if I'm not in a good yeah. mood, I like watching haircut videos. So oh. I follow random barbers on Instagram, 
and I just keep watching the reels of them cutting hair and doing fades or you know like these barbers putting braiding people's hair and right. I just get really like feel really satisfied watching that and that like passes my time and really calms me down but it right. doesn't give me good vibes like scrolling looking at the reels of haircuts isn't like yeah what else do you see on your insta reels what kind of content do you on, consume uh, so i like to consume my own content i usually open my phone just to look at myself i don't really like i mean i look at my friends stuff because they're yeah. my friends and i follow right. them but like if you're asking my feed like my natural explore page like what i'm searching for i'm not searching for anything when i usually open my phone i'm opening my phone to look at myself but between 5 to 8 in the morning in bed when i'm on the reels page you know swiping through because i have nothing better to do and you know uh, whatever and maybe i'm meditating video and I'll take a break and watch reels or something like that um it's not that I'm watching the reels I'm actually interacting so I'm commenting on them right. so that's my activity I'm not like sitting and oh watching the reels no I'm commenting I'm advising or complimenting and that's the activity it could be on anything your fashion sense is absolutely amazing so how how do you plan your looks do you have certain things in mind of that you know baggy goes with skinny skinny or or what how do you plan it So I shop a lot. I buy many things. I am a loose and generous shopper. I have my like I said before I have the amount I budget a month and I'm generous with that budget. It's a good healthy amount for me to spend. And um so in that I do what I want with it. When it actually comes to putting together the look, I don't do it myself. There's one of my staff members at home. His name is Janat. I will say I'm going out and kapda ready rakho and he will Oh. decide what and he's usually 9 out of 10 times right sometimes i'll be like nay but otherwise like he'll do it or if i'm putting it together he'll be there to say baba ha nay baba na oh, wow. so i take his opinion very seriously because that's what's actually worked till today even this outfit was selected by him and, and that's his thing he takes care of my closet and my bag It has to be packed he packs the bag yeah right and uh, another thing that we wanted to know is that we love your the iPhone covers that you yeah. know you always have yeah. we we seen the pap spotting it we yeah. seen in your pictures on your stories where do you usually shop them from um I have an assistant in the UK he's like my number 2 also my very good friend oh. his name's Roman so one day my phone case was falling apart and he was like oh yes sorry your phone case is falling apart i'm anyways going to the apple store i'll buy you a cover so i was like yeah please get me a cover he sent me some picture options and i was like they were boring as fuck and i was like i was like you know me i'm not a boring person i've just browsed like roman these are really boring i need cases that will make headlines and i said it just as a funny line so he would understand what i meant and he was like okay or you say no more and the next he's come with like some 20 phone cases and all these five i was like oh my god wow you really read my personality because it wasn't actually about making headlines that was the statement i said but in ori language when i say i need to make headlines i didn't actually think i was going to make headlines with it i just meant like it has to be cool and loud and part of who i am like if i'm buy if you're going and buy me a phone case buy something cool So he would buy so many cases, and and he really became like the phone case stylist. I could like probably um frame those phone cases, and they're not like <laughs> like del they're not a uh, um hardy. They're like delicate cases, and then he has some weird ones, and he has ones with these realistic eyes coming out. Yeah. And he's given me all these lovely phone cases, and then I realized I love changing my phone case with my outfit. I'm happy. Yeah. Like I'm not starting a phone case brand. I'm not. I'm, I don't want to sell things like. That was always been my M O in life. I'm not looking to sell anything, but I'm happy if something I'm right. doing is making someone else happy. And you know, they've started using fun phone cases and slipping up their day. And if the shop shop person's making sales, great. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Coming to the last question of the segment, what would you say is that one thing that you're yet to do? Oh, there's no one thing. There's like one hundred thousand things that I'm yet to do. I have sure. too many things left to do. So. Recently I did the Ori party but the next Ori event per se that I'm trying to plan now again I'm going to dump it on Kim is the Ori Express because the other day I was following some boy from Kerala randomly found him on Instagram now we're great friends uh never met but we're Insta for internet friends you know we're pen pals whatever and he put up some story of a bus and the bus had like a bed up and a bed down and a bed up and a bit like a row of you know up and down beds and I was like right. what is this because it's not a train because yeah. I just took a train to Kota Kanal I've been on an Indian train I know how it looks and this is not the train and um he was like that's a bus and I was like how is there a bed on the bus so like, can you explain yeah. to me how there is a bed on it's like or it's a sleeper bus sleeper bus yeah. and they have 40 beds on the bus and I was like what yeah. are you saying <laughs> what do you mean you can fit 
40 beds on a bus. bus. How does the bus turn? Where does it go? And I was so, I like screenshotted his story and I've sent it to Kim and I was like, Kim, I want to have an Ori event called the Ori Express where we rent this bus and we start in one city and end up in some mountain somewhere like Delhi to Dehradun or somewhere oh, wow. to Manali or Spitty Valley because people oh, keep wow, showing yeah, up on yeah, my yeah. Instagram and Spitty Valley and I have no idea what it is but it looks really cool and I want this bus and we're going to sell 30 tickets and with the ticket comes an Ori t-shirt and an Ori night suit so on the day we wear the t-shirts and the night we wear the night suits and I'll take security and I'll take a videographer and I'll be there and me and all my Oris will go on this Ori Express and we'll brand the bus with Ori logo and we'll go from the city to this hill station and we'll do the Ori Express and we'll reach there on this two day trip and have this dinner and she never replied to me and like a week later I was like Hi Kim, she's like, oh, are you serious? And I was like, of course I'm freaking serious. I want to do <laughs> to the do Ori this, Express. Yeah. Like, how can I not do, do this, this? Like this bus? And these, my friends are not going to go on a bus trip with me. So of course I'm going to have to find people who will. So <laughs> who of course go. they have to be the fans who will be yeah. happy to be on a bloody bus with me for two days. Like, wow, wow who knew there was yeah. a bed on the bus? Yeah. I bunk beds on a bus. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. of the technology and how few like people are saying oh we've done ai but i'm like babe we have double decker <laughs> buses with 40 beds, beds in this. Yeah. like that yeah. is the next experience i am after so one day i will tell my grandkids you know there was an ori express and yeah. i took 30 people and there were 40 beds on this bus and there's an up bed yeah. and a down bed we and they all been together. and you know and we'll all be then we'll read spitty valley and i'll make this reel with all of them and i'll be like me hai aur ye me abbas hai aur ya hum aap hai ho gaya hai and i'm just like so excited to make this bloody reel with all these people in ori t-shirts and ori night suits on the ori bus going to god knows where we'll go on this bus but like wow. what an exciting yeah, like you know what i mean just keep an eye out so at some point you'll see the ori Express start getting advertised yeah. in places and I'll vet the people obviously we can't have some murder on a bus yeah. with us but um yes yeah what an interesting picture I'm sure but who knew oh, yeah this and imagine if I I'm just thinking if I didn't find this boy on Instagram and if I didn't follow him and if he didn't follow me so I continued to follow him and I didn't yeah. follow him a week later and I didn't see his story because I don't watch other people's content so much I would have never I would have lived my whole life yeah. Not knowing, knowing that, that we had this double decker, 40 people sleeper bus, bus. and how can you be a liver, a boy who has lived if you didn't even know no. a bus like this existed? Right. <sighs> <laughs> All right. With that, uh, we've come to the end of this episode. Awesome. We we had a great time. We absolutely had a blast talking to you. Oh, gosh, a total blast. Total blast. And uh, this is something that I'm gonna personally cherish for a Thank long time. You. Thank you so much. We had a, a great time. Anything you'd like to tell to our audience? Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Keep that in mind guys. Remember, golden words. Thank you so much for your time, Mori. Uh, we had a blast. If you also enjoyed watching us, make sure you like, share and subscribe to Things To Do. If you could also tell the audience. I don't tell audiences to do that. Okay, my bad. No problem. No worries guys. Uh, if you enjoyed watching us, make sure you like, share and subscribe to Things To Do. Till then, good vibes dhoonte jao aur good life paate jao. Tada! Right, so when we talk about good vibes, guys, we're rolling, right? Any issue? Take a wheel, continue. Lovely. Oh, but you forgot, you can't have a good vibe without a good attitude. Oh yes. It's not just the place and the people, it's also you. Time wasted will never come back. You cannot pay any money or even sell your kidney you will not get that time back. No, I not even, people just don't realize that. They're, yeah. they're just continuing as if they're not. <laughs> yeah, what am I doing here? Yeah, I was like, what's going on? I didn't even know. Yeah. Um, I was like, wow, okay, experience. <laughs> yeah, I'm a boy experience. who has lived.